Hey guys, in this video we will be guiding you through Heroic Grim Rail Depot. Keep in mind the information in the footage in this video is from beta and is subject to change. Grim Rail Depot consists of quite a bit of trash with only three bosses and terrible camera angles. The technicians will either need to be your primary focus or they need to be crowd controlled. If left unchecked, they will run and activate an Iron Star, which will inflict a large amount of damage to your party. The Overseers will charge in the direction that the tank is facing them. You will see a red arrow on the ground indicating which direction he will charge. For the first boss fight of the instance, you will go up against Borka the Brute and Railmaster Rocket Spark. We found the mechanics for this fight very simple if both bosses are killed at or around the same time. Railmaster Rocket Spark will cast Target Eliminator. This will launch missiles at several players. If you are targeted by this ability, you will have a target indicator above your head. After a few seconds, a red circle will form under your feet. Simply move out of the red circle to avoid the damage. After Rocket Spark jumps on top of the boxes, he will become untargetable and will begin channeling Missile Barrage. This ability will rain a volley of missiles, inflicting moderate damage to the party. While Rocket Spark is untargetable, the tank can utilize Borka's Mad Dash ability to knock him off the boxes. Borka's Mad Dash will charge forward, dealing a large amount of damage to anyone in his path. This should always be aimed at the boxes that Rocket Spark is standing on in order to knock him down and prevent extra group damage from the Missile Barrage channel. Borka the Brute will periodically use his ability Slam. This deals a significant amount of physical damage to your party and will also interrupt any spells being cast, silencing the player for 3 seconds. If Borka dies before Rocket Spark, Rocket Spark will continue launching missiles, dealing fire damage to your party every 5 seconds. He will begin channeling Locking On, and this ability needs to be interrupted. While channeling this ability, Rocket Spark's damage done is increased by 10% for every 1 second until interrupted. If Rocket Spark dies before Borka, Borka will enrage increasing his damage done by 50% and his attack speed by 50%. This will do significant damage to the tank and cause Slam to do a massive amount of damage. We opted to kill Rocket Spark before Borka, mainly because tank cooldowns aren't needed at any other point of the fight. If you're worried about Slam's damage under the Enrage, then killing Borka first is a viable option. So to summarize, your primary strategy with this fight is to make sure the bosses die at or around the same time. If the tank can utilize Borka's Mad Dash ability to knock Rocket Spark back into the ring, it will help your group defeat this encounter smoothly. Damage overall is moderate, but healers keep in mind the tank will take a fairly large hit from Borka's charge. The bombardiers on your way to the next boss need to be pulled one at a time while avoiding their bombs. Be forewarned that there will be line of sight issues and tight spaces to work with. Infantry will be your lowest priority trash mobs. Gunners need to be killed before infantry and will channel a frontal cone of fire that the tank will need to face away. The tank can sidestep out of this. We chose to CC the boomers and focus down the grenadiers. 
Grenadiers do a small knockback and cause directional issues if they are paired with the gunners, so we would advise CCing one of these when they are paired together. Boomers will cast a cannon barrage, dealing fire damage in a line that players will need to sidestep out of. Bromkar Hulks are the large orcs that only seem to add extra damage to the tank. Cinderseers will cast a Lava Wreath on a random player silencing them. This cannot be interrupted, but they are stunnable. This next encounter where you fight the boss Nitrog Thunder Tower consists of cannons, explosions, and lots of chaos. When you start the fight, Nitrog will be standing in a small room, but will use many AoE effects. Some of them can be avoided, but the size of the room and the confined camera will make it difficult to move properly. Once he reaches 60% health, he will run away and jump in his cannon, blowing up the sides of the rail car that you're in. When moving along the outsides of a platform, there's a pushback from the wind stream. This will also speed you up if you are running towards the back. Nitrog will only use a couple of abilities while in the cannon. Suppressive fire is a continuous barrage of shots focused on one player, indicated with a pair of eyes above their head. This barrage can be avoided by hiding behind any of the boxes or pillars until the channel is done. Slag Blast is an ability targeted on one of the three sections of the rail car. This ability will start off as a small area of bluish flames in the center of the targeted section, which will quickly grow to engulf the entire area. Standing in the fire will quickly become overwhelming as it increases the amount of fire damage you take. On top of dealing with Nitrog's cannon fire, you also have waves of adds consisting of infantry, gunners, boomers, and grenadiers like the ones you killed on your way to the boss. Once you kill a gunner, boomer, or grenadier, you can loot their bodies to pick up one of three types of ammo to help you with the fight. Looting a gunner will give you the ability to shoot while in one of the turrets. This should be used to help kill the waves of adds. Looting a grenadier gives you grenades that you can throw out the adds to help keep them under control. Looting a boomer will give you the ability to use the homing shell, allowing you to deal a significant amount of damage to the cannon that the boss is in. So to summarize, we found that the best strategy was to have the ranged and the healer stand up near the front left pillar, just inside the wind effect, but far enough out to easily be able to move out of the slag blast. The tank would stand in between the two nearby turrets to allow them both to hit the adds, while also keeping the distance far enough from the range to help keep the gunners from constantly hitting them with their flame cone. Your main focus for the fight should be to use the turrets and grenades properly. It's very easy to get overwhelmed with adds otherwise. Once you've destroyed the cannon, the boss will rejoin the fight and needs to be killed while still properly handling any adds that are left. 
He has the same abilities that he had before he jumped in the cannon, but now they'll be easier to dodge. Feel free to spread out some, but make sure you're not too far from your healer. The few trash pulls before the last boss weren't very difficult but will require some careful pulling by your tank. The Farseer will cast Thundering Zone. This cannot be interrupted, however you can utilize any stuns to avoid this ability. This puts a patch of lightning on the ground that you will need to move out of. He will also cast Storm Shield that if not interrupted or removed will cause nature damage that chains when attacked for 10 seconds. Be aware the captain will be walking around, so plan your pulls carefully. For the last big pack, we CC'd one of the Farseers, and the tank pulled one of the outer mobs in order to prevent pulling the rest of the pack. We focused on the Farseer and let the loaders be cleaved down. Carefully pull the remaining mobs while avoiding the captain as best as possible. The captain has one ability to look out for. She will cast Reckless Slash, it's an AoE around the boss that the melee and healer will need to be aware of. Skylord Tavra is the last boss of the instance and is pretty simple when compared to the previous two fights. There are only a few mechanics to deal with. At the beginning of the fight, Tavra will dismount from her Rylak and it will take to the skies. Throughout the fight, the Rylak flies around and above the rail car, swooping down, hitting the group with thunderous breath, and leaving sections of the car covered in lightning. It looked as though the breath was unavoidable damage, but be ready to move out of the lightning quickly, as this will deal a large amount of nature damage. The area covered by each set of the lightning pools will increase each time, meaning that you have less space to work with as the fight goes on. Freezing Snare is a trap Tavra will throw at the feet of a random player. If the trap is triggered, it will deal frost damage and root anyone within 6 yards for 6 seconds. Be aware that hitting any free snare traps on the ground will root you, leaving you unable to move out of the lightning. Tavra will throw a spinning spear at the tank, inflicting a large amount of physical damage and knocking them down. Tavra should always be facing towards the outside of the rail car. Our tank found it pretty easy to position and dodge the spear. On Heroic, Tavra will target a random player with Hunter's Mark. This literally puts a Hunter's Mark above your head. You have a few seconds to move away from your allies before she throws an explosive spear at your location inflicting fire damage to anyone within 8 yards. So to summarize, make sure you avoid freezing snare traps and quickly move out of lightning. If you are targeted by Hunter's Mark, quickly move away from the rest of your group. The tank must also make sure that Tavra is always facing away from other players so they won't get hit by spinning spear. We hope you have enjoyed this video and found the information helpful. If you are interested in more heroic dungeon guides or want to know more about our team, check out the links provided in the description below.